Hello, this is Red Ochre. I was curious to see what some of the differences between these two monster spawners are. On the right here we have one from Ethos Labs. Uh, it's a really pretty structure, it's particularly once I preserved all the negative space. It's his exact design, I believe. I tried to get it exactly, only I got rid of all the unnecessary blocks. So we're going to call it Snowflake. We'll go inside it here, if I can get inside. It's uh, 19 by 19, but it's missing the corners, and each of these half slabs are uh, uh, monsters can't spawn on them. And then uh, it also has these canals here, so it has uh, ab exactly 100 spawning spawnable spaces in it. That's one of the main difference between this terrace design here is uh, his is a set um, uh, design shape. I was able to make this to match it. It's 19 by 19, the spawning area here. So it has a lot more spawning spaces, but those are covered by uh, water, so mobs can't spawn in them more than half the time. So, well, another key difference, as Ethos says, is has no moving parts, no um, uh, redstone wire, or nothing like this. Um, over here, this extra structure attached to the side is the water system. Um, it it only needs to have one. You could have you know as many layers of this as you want, and you still only need this once. Whereas his water is all uh, contained in one single layer. Uh, mine doesn't have two complicated wi wiring, one bud switch, and a um, uh, little redstone. Um, the bud switch has a sticky piston in it and um, there's really only one other piston. This is duplicated. Normally um, it would just be one and this would be at the very top of the thing and that would provide enough time for the water timer. I can give you a... Um, so that part is only because I'm doing this small scale. It wouldn't exist otherwise. So I can give you a step-by-step -step on how, how to build this one if you would like once you see this video. Um, if you decide that this will suit your particular needs more than this one. Um, that's why I built this demonstration. So that's that. Let's go here. Get rid of these. I did two trials of this for you to see anyway. I've done lots but uh, just got it to work how I wanted it to. Um, on the top here, this is what I got in trial one of the snowflake design, trial two of the snowflake design, and over here, trial one of, of the, uh, the uh, terrace design and trial two, trial two of the terrace design and then because mine accommodates both Ed Enderman and its fighters where his, his does not uh, I got this bonus string over here from from mine which we're not uh, counting in, in most of the, the number crunch here so um, <coughs> it mine does consistently outperform I'll talk that one I'll talk more about the numbers and what they mean in just a second. Uh, 
very interesting results. Uh, I, I'm, when I do the step-by-step -step of this, I probably will, whether people ask for it or not, I'll probably end up with, oh, you can see an Enderman spawn over there. That's a, one of the things that's hurting the efficiency there. Uh, I didn't realize this, but I made it, every last other mob dies, but the Endermen don't die when they fall. I didn't realize that Endermen survived falling damage a lot better than all the other mobs. So um, the fact that they're actually spawning in there and not dying is, is hurting the numbers for this one just a little bit. So uh, let's crunch the numbers here and talk about what they mean and uh, see what's going on. So here are the numbers. The first trial, Snowflake did 121, and Terrace did 166, plus the 14 silk. But we're not counting that in, in the rest of the numbers down here. Snowflake, on the second trial, the Snowflake did 72, while Terrace did 90 items in 5 minutes. Each trial was a 5 minute period. So the variance for um, Snowflake was 12.25, uh, and the terrace is about 19. The average difference per trial was 31 items more than for terrace than for Snowflake, which as you can see is about double the average var the variance per trial. So um, if we did th that's a pretty good indication that if we did this a whole bunch of times, uh, the the random nature here wouldn't equal it out. And and I have done a, a bunch of non-specifically time trials. You know, just um, getting away from each spawner and, and uh, letting them run and telling you know see who did more. And uh, as long as I had things set up right the uh, terrace outperformed Snowflake consistently. So I think the numbers here are, are, are pretty indicative, pretty average that we're using. <coughs> I just don't have the patience to really make this serious. I guess that's why this channel is called Bad Science. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Snowflake Snowflake has a hundred spawning squares, like I said, and Terrace has three hundred and sixty-one spawning square squares. Um, uh, Snowflake did nine point nine six five items in a five-minute period per square. Terrace did point three five four items, or point three nine if you include the spider silk. So this indicates a, a major improvement I can do, you do to Terrace is uh, refine the water system a little bit because uh, it's flooding for much longer than is needed um, and uh, that's where I'm losing most of my uh, efficiency there is the, the time that it's spawning, you know. It's it's le you know. It's about a third of the the efficiency per square, per per squa spawning square of the snowflake design. So that's what that that's the most interesting result of this experiment. I think um, it might, who knows, might give Etho if he um, sees this video uh, some ideas on how he might improve his structure. But it certainly uh, given me some ideas on how to improve the the um, terrace design as well. So I I really like I said I I really like the way the snowflake design works. Um, I might perhaps use it if it's particularly if I want the you know something that uh, is relatively compact and um, you know, I wouldn't mind the snowflake structure in my, I might decorate it in my sky kind of thing, might decorate it and um, 
do uh, interesting things with it. It might be cool looking um, and have a constant flow of, of items delivered t to me. That is a, a good, the key advantage of the Snowflake design. I, I hope, um, I really hope Ethos sees this and, and uh, uh, you know, improves his stuff based on, you know, excising that, that negative space, particularly on the bottom layer. But, um, yeah, so uh, I'll continue to use my design because it's quite a bit more efficient, particularly for my uh, monster spawner for my XP, XP farms. Uh, that's, uh, you know, efficiency is key there as far as um, getting the most per time. Um, you don't want to sit there waiting for your your uh, XP to come to you, particularly as, you know, bombers tend to blow up your XP. So um, you want to get it all you can. But for a general automatic monster grinder, I think um, the snowflake design has its definite pluses.